So last week, I talked about how to maintain hope in dark places. If you missed it, please go back and listen to episode 48. Today, I want to talk about how we communicate. I have always been intrigued by psychology and sociology because I'm fascinated by the behavior and the patterns of people and why they think and behave the way they do. At one point in my younger life, I wanted to be a psychologist, and it is my fascination with psychology that prompted me to seek out better and more effective ways to communicate. Today, I'm going to share with you my thoughts based on what I have learned. Communication is so important to get right because when you don't do it effectively, it causes all sorts of problems like hurt feelings, mistrust, anxiety, misunderstandings, disagreements, making mistakes, completing tasks incorrectly, arguments, and relationship breakups or breakdowns. There's a quote that says, good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. Instead of being clear, we sometimes create a muddled mess when we communicate with one another. If you've ever watched a documentary on animals, you know that they have amazing ways to communicate with each other using gestures and sounds, but no words. It's so interesting to me that when humans and words are added to the equation, communication becomes complicated. Then when you add technology like texting and social media, things get even more complicated. You may have heard that expression that women are from Venus and men are from Mars. Well, that phrase isn't just referring to how different men and women are from each other, but it also speaks to how we're almost polar opposites when it comes to how we communicate. This is not just true of men and women, but really the entire human species. We all have in common our humanity, but we have different cultural backgrounds, upbringings, personalities, proclivities, model behavior, and beliefs. All of that influences how we communicate. But despite our differences, we have made so many advancements in technology and medicine and science. I'm thinking of like robotic surgery, stem cell research, and walking on the moon. But we haven't mastered the art of communication. That is one of the reasons I believe so many problems and ills exist in our society today. I believe effective communication is so challenging because it's more than just our ability to talk, but also to listen. Even when we communicate with God, we tend to just talk, right? But we don't often listen for his response or his direction. Think about it. Our primary ways of communicating with God is through prayer, right? And oftentimes we tell God everything we need or want to say, and then we just end the prayer without listening for what he has to say to us or even thinking he has anything to say to us at all. We also tend to communicate with each other the same way. We say what we want to say, but we don't really listen to what the other person is saying or for their response or pay attention to whether or not they are even receiving or understanding what you are saying. So many listen as an expression says not to understand, but to reply. We make communication all about us, me, myself, and I, what I have to say, what I want to express, instead of us, we, and them, which is more of an exchange. But communication is really a two-way street. That is why a conversation between two or more people is called a dialogue, not a monologue. Many of us, if we told the whole truth, are having monologues in our conversations instead of dialogues. You know, communication by definition is the imparting or the exchanging of information. As I said before, it's a two-way street. And there are five main ways we all communicate. So let's run through those. The first is verbal communication. You all know what that is. This is when we engage in speaking with others. Misunderstandings can happen when our tone doesn't match what we're saying or when we raise our voice or emphasize certain words. Any couple or any parent of a preteen or a teen knows what I'm talking about here. You may have heard that expression is not what you said, but how you said it. Okay, then there's nonverbal communication. This includes facial expressions, posture, eye contact, hand movements, and touch. Most of the time you are communicating both non-verbally 
and verbally at the same time, especially when in person. What you do non-verbally during a verbal exchange are often called non-verbal cues. And because people watch what you do and say, things like avoiding eye contact, sighing, scrunched up face, all of those things can cause miscommunication to occur. For instance, if when you scroll through your phone or you're reading messages while talking to someone, you may be engaging verbally, but you appear to be disengaged non-verbally. The other person might interpret your non-verbal cues as boredom, disinterest, or being rude. Because what we do when we speak often says more than the actual words coming out of our mouths. When our nonverbals contradict what we are verbally saying, it can cause confusion, problems, and sometimes offense. So watch what you do as well as what you say. Okay, then there's written communication. This could be an email, a memo, a report, a Facebook post, a tweet, or a contract. So many things can get misconstrued when we communicate in written form, especially on social media or when texting, because people don't have the advantage of hearing your tone, seeing your facial expressions, and so on. For example, some use, you know, capital letters to emphasize certain words or phrases, while others may think those capital letters mean you're screaming at them in written form. Okay, moving on. Visual communication. We are a visual society. Think about it. Televisions are running 24-7. Phones are constantly going off with notifications, texts, and emails. Facebook is visual with memes, videos, and images. And Instagram is an image-only platform. Listening. I think most of us struggle with this the most. Listening requires focus and concentration. And we have so many things competing for our attention today. Phones going off any time of day or night, like I said before, crazy busy schedules, and so on. So in light of all of that, all of those ways that we communicate, my question is, and yours might be also, if we have five different ways to communicate our message to others and vice versa, why then are there so many communication breakdowns happening in the world today? good question. I'm going to stop here for today and I will answer that question in a part two episode of Can You Hear Me Now? Coming your way real soon. Bye for now.